that the enemy intended to destroy this nation. The place where the enemy wanted to bring the spark for civil war. But God. God took over. The faithfulness of my brothers and my sisters and those in this town those who share an identity in Christ, even though they have different cultural identities, they put their identity in Christ first. And that brought the change. That brought the change in the spiritual realm as people started praying. We remember that day, exactly two months ago. As my brother John and so many others behind the scenes started to operate by the Spirit of God, God took over. And what the enemy intended for evil, God turned around. And here we are today, two months later. Men sê, hier is een wonderwerk. Ons moet besef wat hier in die gang is. God is bezig om hierdie land om te draai soos wat ons in ons levens nog nooit gesien het. Ja, daar is die massa by inkomste. Maar dis in die getrouw is en die, die wat saamkom op die tye wat het saak maak waar God iets niets begin doen people we are standing here on behalf of the people of South Africa as you stand there, Tiens, you're a farmer <clears throat> you stand today in the gap for all farmers and there are many other farmers standing here today as a housewife you stand in the gap for all the housewives in South Africa. Whatever you do for your culture, for your people, you stand in the gap for them in the middle of South Africa. People, I want you to turn around right now. Just look at the back. While I was standing there, the Lord showed me. You come at have a look at that. What you see on the right, I wish the people on Facebook and around the nation could see this. On the right you see a water tank. That could be a symbol of a boiling pot. A boiling pot on the right. Because that was the enemy's plan with Seneca in the Free State. On the right, uh, on the left, you see, uh, what's that? He's crown in English. Crane. Can you see the crane is in the shape of the cross? Can you see how that crane is stretching itself over the boiling pot? Do you see that? This is the God that we are serving. He's extending himself above the situation of this nation. And he's drawing his people to the cross. Can we give the Lord a shout? Can we glorify his name? Let me thank you that your promises will prevail in this nation. The cross of Jesus will be the victory shout of the people of South Africa. All cultures and all people. People, it's in moments like this that we realize God is serious. Not just with South Africa, but with Africa. So I'm standing here on behalf of the Afrikaner people. Afrikaanse mensen. Afrikaner mensen. Here and there I will switch to Afrikaans. Please forgive me. But I think you follow my heart. This is the moment where we come before our br black brothers and sisters. And we ask for forgiveness. Let me just emphasize something. I think uh, even us as Afrikaner people need to just get some context. There was a leader the Lord raised up. And if I say his name, all of you will know who that person is. He was a leader that played a very important role during the Anglo-Boer War. And his name was General General de la Rey. The night before he died, the Lord gave him a scripture. He died in 1914. It was the time of the Boer Rebellion. And the Lord spoke to him. Now that is a leader. That, that is a credible leader, even recognized overseas when, he, when they went on their trip. But the night before he died, 
He prayed and said, Lord, what is your plan with this nation? And this came out the very next, or, or, or on his funeral. And the Lord gave him this scripture, and I want to read it. Because this is where we, the Afrikaner people, with our brother bond and all our stuff, made the mistake. Because we did not follow the scripture, the word of the Lord, the, he, the, that the Lord gave uh, General de la Rey. He, he gave him the following scripture, and I don't know even if the black people here know about this. But if this word was applied correctly, we would have seen a completely different nation. Where sculptures serve one another in order to, to push one another forward. The Lord gave him the scripture. Now listen, uh, it's 2 Chronicles 32 verse 7 and 8. 2 Chronicles 32 verse 7 and 8. Please go read it again. The scripture says, be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord told General De La Rey. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria. In that time, the queen of England. Because the British were hot on our heels. Nor before all the multitude that is with him. For they are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of the flesh. But with us is the arm of the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. What did we choose as Afrikaner people? We chose the arm of the flesh. We started to create our own secret societies with the Bruderbond, restoring the Afrikaner culture, building it up to 1948. And what happened? We disobeyed God. Please, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not talking politics. It's not about the National Party should not have won. It's not that. It's about what we done with what God placed in our hands. He entrusted us with leadership in the nation. And what did we do? We used it to oppress the multitudes. Why? But the zwart gevaar is daar. Die rooi gevaar is die kant, die Engelse. Die zwart gevaar in die massas, lê hier voor ons. Ons moet scheiding maak. We need to bring the vision. What is the strategy of Satan in this world? Divide and rule. And we follow these plans. Why? The arm of the flesh. Because we thought we knew better. This is the time where the Afrikaner trots can surface. But we were so wrong. In our pride, we fell. People, mensen, as ons ons nie vandag voor God gaan verneder nie, en sê, Jere, wat het ons gedoen met dit wat in ons hand gesit het? dan weet ek nie hoe hierdie land sy toekomst gaan lyk. If we don't get to a point of repentance, of a point of humility, we will keep on operating in the arm of the flesh, what the Bible warns us against, and not the arm of the spirit. God is drawing us to the arm of the spirit. Maybe you stood here today and some of the things you feel it's a bit Pentecostal or it's a bit this culture or the bit that, you know, ons krym ons vinnig iets wat krap. Mag die Heere ons vandag bevry van die krapperigheid. Mag hy ons verlos van ons eie selfsichtigheid. En ons vry maak en geloof in ons harte sê om te sê, my God, ek sal my voor u verneder. On this day, I will bow before you and before my black brothers and sisters. Mense, dit het nog nie in ons land gebeur. 94 came, the change came. 
But the pride remained. The pride remained. And we still want to do our own thing. People, the Lord is, 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 is cutting us to the heart today. All of us. We've heard. First, for it echt gepraat het. Swart broers and sisters, wat kom repent. Hoe werd dit? Ons is dan in a nieuwe dispensatie. We are in a new dispensation. How can my black brothers repent? And what they said was the truth. Because secular humanism came into this nation since 94. Bringing abortion. Bringing all these ungodliness. The morals of our schools, our children are collapsing. Why? 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 Because we're building on the sand. We left the rock. And it's time that the nation of South Africa come back and build its house on the rock. But this time we build it together. My brother said, Amen. My brother said, we are living stones as we stand on this high place. We are living stones. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. That we are the spiritual house of the Lord. How can we divide the spiritual house of the Lord? Who are we? To say, no, white's this side, black's that side. Your culture, you are there, and our, our culture, we are comfortable here. Yes, we will always have our cultural identity. But the question is, what defines you? And we want to say this to the people of South Africa. People of South Africa, what defines you? Is it your cultural identity or your identity in Christ? If it's your cultural identity, or if it's any other identity, whether you're rich, whether you've degrees, whether you have whatever achieved, if that defines your identity, you need to repent before the living God. You need to surrender your life to the one and only God, Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Mensen, kom ek sê gau vir julle, soos wat julle achter gesien het, die kruis, the cross, will be the saving grace of this nation. Nothing else. As my brother said, not politicians, not the best economy, not the best whatever management, and let's just get the right decisions in policy and in government and all. No! God is allowing this nation so that to the point where the only thing that can save it is the cross of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus, our Lord and Savior, said himself? He said, unless a seed dies he cannot multiply mense as Afrikaner mense moet ons vandag voor die Heere kom ons het nog nie hoor my mooi ons het nog nie sedert 94 direk amtelik soos een openbare vergadering soos hierdie vir ons swaard broers en, en, en sisters om vergifnis gevraag oor die onderdrukking van apartheid. We have not publicly repented to our black brothers and sisters. Now the Lord is choosing this town where the enemy intended a boiling pot. This place where black and white together on this date, 16 December, exactly two months, can you see the rhythm and the planning of God? Can you see the significance of why this needed to happen this day? To come and ask forgiveness. People, yes, we blame the government and we blame many things. And yes, they want to take the farms and all of these things are in our head. But we forget the legacy of apartheid is living with us. The seeds that were planted there, we bearing the fruit. And we blame them and we say it's, it's, it's foolish policies or it's foolish this. Or it's the fruit of our own doing as Afrikaner men. We need to repent. The Afrikaans word is verootmoediging. What betekent verootmoediging? That say, Jere, forgive me. In the Bible, many times, Daniel, Isaiah, many of the prophets, even Jesus, 
they did what they call identificational repentance. Because many have a problem with this repentance. I didn't oppress the black people. No. I ask forgiveness for my people having oppressed the black people. Like Daniel coming before the Lord saying, Lord, forgive my people that we have sinned against you. We have sinned against God. And you know what is worse? We use the Bible to justify that. We use this book, the word of the living God, to justify that. Wat sy sonde is dit die voor God so oor nie? Waarachtig gaan ons so ver? Nie net politiek nie, nie net beleid nie, maar ons gebruik hierdie boek, en ek haal vir toosjes aan, wat in Bloemfontein gestaan het, in 1944, by die ouse noorde sal, ons was in die plek, toe oortuig hy die politieke leiders, dat die boek van, die genesis van Babylon, is die rechtvaardiging vir apartheid. Mag God ons vergewe. Uit die tijd het 48 gekom. That we use the word of God. My Heere, mense. Wat het ons gedoen? Ons mense, ons bloed, ons voorzate. Mense, en ek kom leen nie vandag een skuldgevoel op jou nie. Hoor mooi. Hier is nie een swaarigheid nie. Hierdie, die Heere sê, my las is licht. Maar ons moet verstaan wat in hierdie land gebeur het, so dat ons waarachtig in die nieuwe toekomst kan aangaan. We have to understand the extent of the injustice, so that we can walk into a new future. Let me ask you, as a white person, kom ek vraag jou, are you ready to walk into a new, new future? If you are, please put up your hand. A new future. If you are, Kamal had sak, thank you. Let's begin this new future on our knees before God. If you want to see a nation standing up for God, let us, as white people, bow before the living God we're not bowing before men two men we're not worshipping people we are worshipping God but we are saying Lord forgive us and can you believe it we ask for the white people to bow now our black brothers and sisters bow with us look at the grace in their hearts the forgiveness this is the sign that we forgive each other I'm going to do a prayer, and please don't worry about your clothes, die goed kan gewas word, man, dis aardse goed. Ons verneder jou voor God. We bow before the God of heaven and earth, in the middle of South Africa. Jere, my God, ons kom by voor u. Lord, we bow before you. And as Afrikaner people, as white people of South Africa, we say, Lord, please forgive us. Lord, we are done with the arm of the flesh. We choose this day the arm of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in our nation. We are done with tradition, church traditions, man-made traditions, and we will follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lord, this day you lead us. You've spoken to our hearts that we walk into this new future on our knees in repentance before you. Jere, ons kom voor u. Jere, u sien ons harte vandag. Lord, we are asking your forgiveness. We are asking our black brothers and sisters for forgiveness for the oppression, for the division, for the hatred we have sown, for the so many troubles and things they needed to win through, even those, their parents, their grandparents. Jere, forgive us. My God, ons is jammer. Ons is jammer oor apartheid. Ons is jammer oor dit 
but us nie in die gehoorsaam was nie. Lord, we are sorry, forgive us. We repent of our sin, God, we repent. And Lord, we ask our brothers and sisters, in your presence, please forgive us. Forgive us. We are sorry. We are more than sorry. Our hearts are broken before you. Please forgive us for what we've done. John, Pastor John, please come next to me. Oh, Jesus.